Now, the paper I'm going to present is titled as a need for a novel approach to design the definition in lexicon for Semitic languages. Uh, the first author in Chalo will be making this presentation. Our presentation outline is on overview of Semitic languages, uh, the meaning, uh, purpose, and uh, development approaches of derivation lexicons. And the third will be our approach, and we'll conclude and uh, present our future work. The overview of, uh, of Semitic languages, just here, key points on uh, classes of Afroasiatic language phylum that this uh, language group belongs to. Currently, native speakers are estimated to be over 360 million, and widely spoken languages today, Arabic, Amharic, Tigrinya, Hebrew, Syriac, and Maltet, in that order, by population size. They are related in phonology, morphology, lexicon, and syntax, but we'll make a focus on morphology and lexicon uh, as they are the most related to our present, I mean, our paper. When it comes to morphology, uh, these languages involve both uh, derivation and inflection, which is really uh, non-concatenative and very much complex. When we refer to derivation, just briefly, these languages make use of roots, consonantal roots, sometimes referred as radicals. They make use of uh, a conjugation of uh, consonants, vowels, as a pattern governed by rules in order to perform derivation of surface forms from roots. Inflection is meant for suffixation, prefixation, infixing, and uh, circumfixing reduplication, which is a little bit complex as compared with the Indo European languages, which are a concatenative in nature, marking gender, person, number, and so on. For example, uh, I take the Amharic root, Mikr, resulting in various post categories, noun, verb, adjective, from this pattern using rules and this uh, input. I mean, given this pattern, it results this derived forms for noun, verb, adjective, as advisor, advised, and advisory. Inflection, if you take Makari as advisor from the derivation component and if you add the plural marker Oj, which is a suffix, it means advisors. Mi, which is any, when it is prefixed, it results as mine. You have Kus, which refers to material, it becomes material, so as a plural marker, but in fixing and replication together, Kusa Kus, which means and Gadel, which refers to kill, is just didn't kill al and am as prefix and suffix, which is circumfixing. Romanization based on this, this guideline for Amharic, which is widely used. They are rich in verb lexicon, that is, Amharic consists of nouns, adjectives, and verbs derived from uh, Amharic verbs, and Arabic is the same, almost even more than Amharic. Hebrew is generally also considered as primarily verbal language. In terms of uh, semantics even, uh, words derived from the same root are related in semantics. If you take Ketev, Ketev, both for Hebrew and uh, Arabic, which are uh, common examples in, in this language literature, you will find uh, these English equivalents over here, except destiny, the rest are almost related to meaning. Destiny is believed to be different from others, which may happen even in other languages due to usage over time. And the same for Amharic, the equivalent is F in Amharic, resulting in this equivalent English meanings from these uh, forms. Now, when we talk about the derivation lexicons, first we'll give uh, meaning and then continue with their applications, purposes, and uh, development approaches. Lexical ontologists generally include dictionaries, thesaurus, and wordnets, and these days, because of uh, certain uh, IRNLP tasks that call for additional resources, 
derivation lexicons emerged, which is not as common as dictionaries, thesaurus, and wordnets. And derivation lexicons are nothing but uh, post-variant clusters brought together. Okay? The example is uh, the, the English derivation lexicon catalog, which you can find a link and try even exercise on it. If you type a word, you will find different clusters. If you, we type a break and uh, found out about 39 clusters from which we have chosen two multi-member clusters, as you can see. This is one cluster and this is another cluster. We'll see how this takes place at all. Now, in terms of the application of derivation lexicons, it all emanates from the morphology knowledge as an important input in various tasks such as language learning, information retrieval, and natural language processing. Language learning benefits a lot from this in learning new vocabulary and second language learning even. This is for children usually, reading and spelling accuracy, it enhances that because of the pattern structure which you can easily derive, understanding and analyzing language and even in our mental lexicon. It enhances query expansion and uh, document indexing for IR. The Katawar has been tested uh, fruitful in this, as Hulan indicated. And natural language processing, Katawar has been tested and useful in natural language generation, machine translation, textual and lexical entailment, prior phrase identification, lexicon construction, enhancing wordness, other lexicons, for instance, like coordinates. And the German derivation lexicon derived base has been uh, able to improve similarity prediction and synonym choice. In terms of development approaches, first, finite state morphology, which is an important uh, technique in derivation and inflection. And when it comes to non concatenative languages, it requires uh, modifications to try to handle multiple levels. So it all started in the 80s with the Finnish language, with two-level morphology, but later on modified continuously from four level up to five level, and a single tape representing multiple levels, and even finite state memory registered uh, techniques, trying to improve limitations of previous approaches. Now, practically, Indo-European languages use it uh, analysis-based synthesis and resource intensive such as pre-processing tools and uh, corpora and we'll see three examples it's the French uh, derivation family using inflection lexicon as input and clustering approach uh, single rule the p similarity as you can see it and the implementation involves uh, clustering agglom hierarchical agglomerative clustering to identify, to identify families in minimum, maximum span in tree for suffixation. The gap that we, can, we have seen in this paper is there is no any comment about any subclustering of variants and the presence or absence of single member clusters, as you can see. The English Catavar made use of uh, corpora and other resources, including stemmers and other lexicons. The clustering approach involves three concepts, natural linkability, like bringing in this kind of structures, verbs and nouns of the same character set, the porter stemmer, and the, kata, the katawar itself approach. And you have the majority, at least near to 50% of the clusters produced in this approach are single member clusters, which is difficult. Now, the German uh, derived base, another derivation lexicon, it made use of analysis of a large corpus with pre-processing tools in place. And an interesting that we can see is the clustering approach they have, they have used. It. They have used this intuition that a binary derivation relation between two pairs of uh, derived forms along with their paradigms are considered valid candidates for a cluster if and only if the second pair can be derived from the first one. And with this, the, the, the sad news is 90% of, over 90% of the results are single member clusters. That is, this is a, a major limitation. So our assessment, both Katavar and Derivis are single uh, time dominated clusters. This needs improvement. At least to have two uh, post variants uh, as entries because 
the de derived forms that we can see in ordinate at least two is a verb adjective, adjective noun and so on. So maybe what we think of uh, is that we can use multiple hierarchical rules instead of just the linkability concept of Katavar or a single intuition as is the case in Rabies or French derivational families. So in semantic languages, some approaches for deriving uh, forms from roots and rules is there. So analysis-based techniques in Arabic mainly, you have vocal and uh, corporeal and pre-processing tools tried in four research papers for uh, producing resources for different purposes. But the synthesis-based approach, which is important and more relevant for us, is the rules, roots and rules as input and then uh, tried in Arabic with these two researchers and Amharic in a number of them. In the Arabic, the merits are, uh, they, they show the viability of derivation as resource development, uh, encouraging us even to uh, go ahead with derivation as a means of resource development. The gap is most Arabic generation makes use of uh, inflection-based uh, analysis-based derivation, which is less important for us. For idiosemitic languages, mainly Amharic and to a certain extent just a single one, uh, Tigrinya by Gasser, they have tried to use roots and rules in generating resources. And that is an important input for us to adopt certain techniques from there and uh, deal with uh, in our research as well. The gap, the resources are not in a way that can be usable, but they are at an early experimental stage. So all the papers, the experiments that we see are not to the stage where the resources they built are usable for even research let alone for public use. And there is no effort whatsoever that based on our experience, based on our effort that uh, a lexicon, a derivation lexicon similar to Katavar is, is in place in semantic languages and no clustering of uh, derived forms is being attempted to generate positive variants in a manner to Katavar or derived base. So our approach is motivated by uh, some of the problems and achievements of the research that we have reviewed. One important motivation for us is a lack of corpora and tools for semantic languages. And methods and tool adaptation is also difficult from uh, Indo-European languages because of morphology differences between these two classes of languages. Derivation lexicon development is not given much attention by the semantic language research community. So we focus, or our research focus is to, that, to advance existing derivation uh, research in semantic languages a little bit further by designing a generic approach that can synthesize words from roots using rules and further clustering post variants and post homogeneous forms in a manner they can be usable for research in IR and natural language processing. Post homogeneous clustering is the main organizing principle in Wordnet and we try to bring that idea along with post variant clustering in our proposed approach. Regarding novelty of our approach, it is the reverse of the resource-rich uh, languages. If Katavar, Katavar and derived base are analysis-based, but we just do the other way, and they rely on resources and tools, which probably results in error propagation and uh, resulted as well with dominant singleton clusters due to, due to limited rules for clustering. So our, our strategy is to use multiple hierarchical heuristic rules and language features, particularly language features, should be used for uh, post-homogeneous clustering. We try to look into post-variant clustering in the following manner. So we try to capture the root signature of every word derived from a root during the early stages of our uh, implementation. 
we anticipate to have at least one macro cluster for forms of a root, but in subclustering, we'll try to use alternative heuristic rules, uh, like producing, for instance, two members for a subcluster as, as, as a minimum requirement. For post homogeneous clustering, we, are, we try to achieve it with linguistic rules. By the way, post homogeneous clustering is a minimum requirement for uh, ordinate entries, like between nouns, uh, verbs, adjectives, like members of a noun cluster together, synsets or synonyms. We try to use uh, rules, heuristics to capture extract during the stage of derivation, as we said it earlier. This is the architecture, five step process. Step one on stem synthesis, uh, step two on uh, inflection, and step three, noise filtering is incorpora and some prediction algorithm. Uh, step four will be on clustering, both post variants and post homogeneous. Uh, members and in step five, we'll try to apply it to query expansion as an example in information tree to justify how usable it is going to be. Okay, so some illustration you have uh, an Amharic example as a second language. We, we take uh, rules from Baye and Bender and Flas, and our root corpora will be from Bender and Flas as well. And we are not going to deal with simple nouns and uh, adjectives as well as all adverbs because they are not productive as it has been stated in the literature. Rather, we focus on verbs and the nouns and adjectives that, we, that actually make up the majority of uh, the entries of these languages as we have presented it earlier. Finite states for rule implementation in the early stages and noise filtering, as we have indicated, corpora and prediction method, and uh, capture root signature and heuristics for uh, post variants as well as linguistic rules for post homogeneous clusters. So you have, for instance, post variant clustering example, uh, verb noun adjective uh, captured, and with simple heuristics is to which noun adjective forms are semantically linked with the verb, for instance, just a sample one. So if you have a root super, subber, uh, the first cluster, which you can see in this table, is about someone, like Brock, one who breaks as an hour, and subber, different. And all these are obtained from, uh, I mean, the, the forms, uh, the, and the clauses are from Amsalu and Ken, dictionary suppose but the clustering is this concept that we have presented. For pose homogeneous clustering, we made use of rules from four, that is from uh, Baye, and then you have process nouns, object nouns, state nouns of the same root. As a conclusion, uh, we made a sort of literature review, and uh, the gaps are not a revelation lexical for Semitic languages, and we have also proposed an illustrated architecture and proposed new clustering areas. And our major contribution for this particular paper is a sort of survey of literature and a design architecture which is illustrated well. And we plan to conduct extensive experiment to validate our research. Thank you.